The Brahma Kumaras are a Hindu spiritual movement that originated in Hyderabad, Sindh, during the 1930s. The Brahma Kumaras Sanskrit, people of Brahma, movement was founded by Lekraj Kripalani. The organization is affiliated with the United Nations and is known for the prominent role that women play in the movement. It teaches a form of meditation that focuses on identity as souls, as opposed to bodies. They believe that all souls are intrinsically good and that God is the source of all goodness. The sect teaches to transcend labels associated with the body, such as race, nationality, religion, and gender, and it aspires to establish a global culture based on what it calls, "...soul consciousness." In 2008, the movement claimed to have more than 825,000 regular students, with over 8,500 centers in 100 countries. <laughs> Early history The Brahma Kumaris, originally called Om Mandali, started in Hyderabad, Sindh in northwest India. It received this name because members would chant Om together, before having discourse on spiritual matters in the traditional satsang style. The original discourses were closely connected to the Bhagavad Gita. The founder, Lekraj Kubchand Kripalani, who became known in the group as Om Baba, was a wealthy jeweler. He reported what he said were a series of visions and other transcendental experiences that commenced around 1935 and became the basis for the discourses. He said he believed there was a greater power working through him and that many of those who attended these gatherings were themselves having spiritual experiences. The majority of those who came were women and children from the Bibund caste, a caste of wealthy merchants and business people whose husbands and fathers were often overseas on business. After about three years of meetings it became clear that Om Mandali was giving very special importance to the role of women, and was not adhering to the caste system. The group had named a 22-year-old woman, Rade Pokardas Rajwani, then known as Om Rade, as its president, and her management committee was made up of eight other women. People from any caste were allowed to attend meetings. The group also advocated that young women had the right to elect not to marry and that married women had the right to choose a celibate life. In tradition-bound patriarchal India, these personal life decisions were the exclusive right of men. A committee headed by a number of important male members of the Bibund community began to form in opposition and became known as the Anti Om Mandali Committee. On 21 June 1938, this group picketed Om Mandali's premises, preventing members from entering. This caused considerable upheaval in the community. Women attending were verbally abused, there was an attempt to burn the premises down and the police made several arrests. Many women and girls were later victims of domestic violence in their homes. The picketing resulted in criminal proceedings being taken against both groups, and on 16 August 1938 the local district magistrate ordered that Om Mandali be prevented from meeting. This ban was reversed on 21 November 1938 after an appeal to the court of the Judicial Commissioner of Sindh. In an unusual move the judges directly criticized the district magistrate for trying to punish the victims for the disturbance caused by the perpetrators and for trying to apply the law according to his own personal bias. 
Nevertheless, in an increasingly sour atmosphere, Om Mandali had decided to leave Hyderabad and gradually relocated its activities to Karachi in the latter half of 1938. Approximately 300 members moved. On 31 March 1939 the government appointed a tribunal to inquire into the activities of Om Mandali. When the tribunal made its findings, Om Rade responded by compiling a book titled As This Justice. Criticizing the tribunal, which did not have a constitutional basis and made its findings without taking evidence from Om Mandali. In May 1939 the government used the tribunal's findings to effectively reinstate the ban, declaring Om Mandali an unlawful association under Section 16 of the Criminal Law Amendment Act 1908. Nevertheless, Om Mandali continued to hold their satsangs, and the government did not enforce it. Possibly because of this the committee then hired someone to kill Om Baba, but the attempt was unsuccessful. Topic. Expansion In May 1950 Om Mandali moved to Mount Abu in Rajasthan, India. From the beginning, the organization's focus had been on education, not worship, and for this reason it renamed itself as Brahma Kamaras World Spiritual University. In 1952, after a 14-year period of retreat, a more structured form of teaching began to be offered to the public by way of a seven-lesson course, after an unpromising beginning when it almost ran out of funds. From the mid-1950s the Brahma Kamaras began an international expansion program. Since the 1970s it first spread to London and then to the West. The most visible manifestations of the religion are its spiritual museums. Located in most major Indian cities, in 1980 the Brahma Kamaras became affiliated to the United Nations Department of Public Relations as a non-governmental organization. In 1983 the Brahma Kamaras achieved consultative status with the Economic and Social Council at the United Nations. The Brahma Kamaras now has a permanent office space in New York for their work with the United Nations. The leadership and membership of the BK movement remains primarily female, for example, in the UK only one third of the 42 centres are run by males and 80% of the membership are women. As of February 2015, centers are mostly in followers' own homes with a tendency toward middle or upper class membership. Estimates for its worldwide membership ranges from 35,000 in 1993 to 400,000 in 1998 to 450,000 in 2000, however, it is reported that many were probably not completely committed to the group's worldview. Topic. Beliefs. The movement has distinguished itself from its Hindu roots and sees itself as a vehicle for spiritual teaching rather than as a religion. Topic. Self 
The Brahma Kumaris see humans as being made up of two parts, an external or visible body including extensions such as status and possessions and a subtle energy of the soul whose character structure is revealed through a person's external activity, but always this is created by the inner soul whether actions are done with love, peacefully, with happiness or humility as an aspect of one's soul. The group teaches that the soul is an infinitesimal point of spiritual light residing in the forehead of the body it occupies, and that all souls originally existed with God in a soul world, a world of infinite light, peace and silence. The Brahma Kumaris teach that souls enter bodies to take birth in order to experience life and give expression to their personality. Unlike other Eastern traditions, the Brahma Kumaris do not believe that the human soul can transmigrate into other species. Topic: <laughs> Supreme Soul The Brahma Kumaris use the term, Supreme Soul, to refer to God. They see God as incorporeal and eternal, and regard him as a point of living light like human souls, but without a physical body, as he does not enter the cycle of birth, death and rebirth. God is seen as the perfect and constant embodiment of all virtues, powers and values and that he is the unconditionally loving father of all souls, irrespective of their religion, gender, or culture. The Brahma Kumaris believe God's purpose is to be the spiritual reawakening of humanity and the removal of all sorrow, evil and negativity. They do not regard him as the creator of matter, as they consider matter to be eternal. Pratibha Patil, the UPA left candidate and former president of India, said on camera during the Indian presidential election, 2007, that she spoke to Baba, a term the BKs use for God, at the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University at their headquarters in Mount Abu, Rajasthan. Patil stated that when she met Baba he had indicated great responsibility was coming her way. Topic. Karma The Brahma Kumaris believe that every action performed by a soul will create a return accordingly, and that the destiny of the soul's next body depends on how it acts and behaves in this life. Through meditation, by transforming thinking patterns and eventually actions, the Brahma Kumaris believe that people can purify their karmic account and lead a better life in the present and next birth. Topic. Cycle of time In contrast to linear theories of human history that hypothesize an ancient point of origin for the universe and a final destruction, the BKs do not posit a start, end or age for the universe, believing such concepts to be an erroneous application of the human life cycle to the universe. BKs believe the universe to follow an eternal, naturally occurring 5,000-year cycle, composed of four ages Yugas, the Golden Age Sat Yuga, the Silver Age Treta Yuga, the Copper Age Dwapar Yuga, the Iron Age Kali Yuga, and each represents 1,250 years of the cycle. The present period of this cycle is sometimes described as a fifth age or confluence age, as it is considered to be the confluence, the junction or meeting, between the Iron Age and the Golden Age. The first half of the cycle, the Golden and Silver Ages, is considered to be the age of soul conscious living. 
The Brahma Kumaris see this as a time of heaven on earth or as a version of the Garden of Eden when human beings are fully virtuous, complete, self-realized beings who lived in complete harmony with the natural environment. The primary enlightenment was the innate understanding of the self as a soul. The Brahma Kumaris believe that modern civilization must be destroyed by global nuclear conflict, coupled with natural calamities and that these cataclysmic events form part of a natural and cathartic cyclic process. When the organization began, emphasis was placed on the physical destruction of the world as seen in the cataclysmic visions of Dada Lekraj. As the organization developed, it witnessed World War II, the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the Cold War, and the destructive aspects of its teachings were reframed as a process of transformation. The students of the organization had also made many failed predictions of the violent destruction of the world, between 1987 and 2008 and the original teachings also referred to a particular date 1976. Aspects which are now downplayed. Topic. Practices. Topic. Meditation The Brahma Kumaris teaches a form of meditation through which students are encouraged to purify their minds. This may be done by sitting tranquilly, then making affirmations regarding the eternal nature of the soul, the original purity of one's nature, and the nature of God. The aim of the BK meditation is also to learn to hold meditative states while being engaged in everyday life. For this reason meditation is usually taught and practiced with open eyes. Topic. Good wishes and pure feelings Flowing on from the BK belief that everyone is a spiritual being, is the practice of Shubhana pure feelings, and Shubkamna good wishes. For BKs, all prejudices and ill feelings are seen as arising from identifying the self and others based on external labels like race, religion, gender, nationality, beauty, or lack of, etc. However, when there is the practice of finding the intrinsic goodness in each one, the prejudice based on those labels is replaced by the vision of one spiritual parent, one human family, and universal spiritual values such as respect, love, peace and happiness. A flagship slogan for the BKs has been when we change, the world changes. It is for this reason that BKs consider bringing about this kind of change within the self as an important form of world service. Topic: <inaudible> Study Merely. Brahma Kumaris students study the Merli. The Hindi word Merli literally translates to flute. It is an oral study, read to the class early each morning in most BK centers on the world. The Merleys are derived from mediumship and spirit possession. There are two types of Merle. Sikar Merleys refer to the original orations that BKs believe to be the supreme soul speaking through Brahma Baba. Avyakt Merleys are spoken by Bapdada. BKs believe Bapdada is God and the soul of their deceased founder. 
Bapdada, God, is believed to speak to the BKs through a senior BK medium, Daddy Gulzar. Avyakt Murlis are still being spoken at the BK's headquarters in India. Students must complete the Brahma Kamaras Foundation course and start by attending morning Murli class before visiting the headquarters. Topic. Lifestyle Brahma Kamaras recommend a specific lifestyle in order achieve greater control over physical senses. However, many participate in a casual way, electing to adopt whichever beliefs and lifestyle disciplines in the following list they wish. Complete celibacy, whether in or out of marriage. Sattvic vegetarianism, a strict lacto-vegetarian diet excluding eggs, onions, garlic and or spicy food, cooked only by the self or other members of the Brahma Kamaras. Abstaining from alcohol, tobacco and non-prescription drugs. Daily early morning meditation at 4 o'clock to 4.45 a.m., called, Amrit Vila. Daily morning class at approximately 6.30 a.m. Brahma Kamaras can be identified by their frequent adoption of wearing white clothes, to symbolize purity. Students often prefer to keep the company of other BK followers as opposed to non-BKs. Activities Education <inaudible> 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 Traditionally, the Brahma Kamaras conducted an introduction to meditation consisting of seven one-hour-long sessions. The sessions include their open-eyed meditation technique and their philosophy. The organization also offers courses in positive thinking, self-management leadership, and living values. They also have a number of voluntary outreach programs in prisons. With the support of Vicente Fox, the Brahma Kamaras introduced their meditation practice and philosophy to the government of Mexico through the Self Management Leadership SML. The SML course is closely related to the Brahma Kamaras philosophy and is the backbone of Brahma Kamaras management philosophy. Ninety trained facilitators ran programs through which 25,000 people at the top level of government have passed. Topic: <laughs> Renewable energy. The Brahma Kamaras have launched several environment initiatives. Their work in solar energy and sustainable energy has included the 2007 development of the world's largest solar cooker, and a solar thermal power plant in Talheti at the base of Mount Abu, where the international headquarters is located. The 25-acre site is projected to produce 22,000 kWh of electricity daily. The project was made financially possible with the support of the Indian and German governments. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sustainable Yajic Agriculture. Sustainable Yajic Agriculture SYA, is a program started in northern India in 2009. The program has been a collaboration between Sardar Krushnagar Dantawada Agricultural University in Gujarat, India and the Brahma Kamaras Rural Development Wing. 
The program has now been publicly backed by the Indian government. A key member of Narendra Modi's cabinet, Agriculture Minister Radha Mohan Singh announced the government's support for the program. With the government's support the program has been redesigned into Ukhil Bharatiya Krushak Sashaykatikaran Abhijan ABKSA, and was launched in December 2015. ABKSA extends the initial scope of the SYA program to include teaching meditation and self-empowerment to the farmers themselves. This is possibly a response to the problem of farmer suicides in India. ABKSA now comprises three main elements. 1. A self-empowerment program for Indian farmers. 2. Ongoing research on whether the use of meditation can improve crop yields. 3. Education on a blend of traditional and organic farming techniques. One basic premise of the Brahma Kamaras Environmental Initiative is that thoughts and consciousness can affect the natural environment. More esoteric approaches to plant development are nothing new, perhaps most widely known as Findhorn Eco Village. In 2012, experiments were being conducted in partnership with leading agricultural universities in India to establish if the practice of Brahma Kamaras meditation in conjunction with implementing more traditional organic farming methods could be shown to have a measurable and positive effect on crop development. An article published in the Journal of Asian Agri-History reviews two separate studies on SYA. One study was conducted by G.B. Pant University of Agriculture and Technology, G.B.P.U.A.T., Pantnagar, Uttarakhand and the other by Sardar Krushanagar Dantawada Agricultural University SDUAT, of Gujarat. The review reports that the Brahma Kamaras meditation techniques used enhanced seed growth, seed germination rates and increased the level of microbes present in the soil. Topic. Criticism Adherents have been criticized by non-members for hiding or downplaying their prophesied physical destruction of the world particularly as they still believe that such an event will happen soon. However, they maintain that their primary purpose is to teach meditation and peace of mind, not to push their views about the different challenges the world is facing on non-members who may be visiting the group to learn about meditation or values-based living. In the Journal for the Scientific Study of Religion, Howell reported that the Brahma Kamaras protected itself from the practice of families. Dumping their daughters with the organization by requiring a payment from the families of those wishing to dedicate their daughters to the work and services of the organization. The payment is intended to cover the living expenses incurred during the trial period. John Wallace wrote a book examining the status of tradition in the contemporary world, which used the religion as a case study, focusing on recruitment methods, the issue of celibacy, reinterpretation of religious history. He reported the rewriting of the revelatory messages Merleys by the Brahma Kumari. They have been accused of breaking up marriages, when the organization started, empowering women to assert their right to remain celibate particularly in marriage, was a prime factor in the controversy that arose in 1930s Sindh, as it directly challenged the dominance of men over women in the patriarchal Indian subcontinent. Feminist commentator Prem Chowdhury has criticized the practice of celibacy within the organization as being a form of patriarchal control. Uh, 
Topic. See also. Associated concepts meditation. Mediumship. Millenarianism. Adhyatmic Ishwarya Vishwa Vidyalaya General Hindu Reform Movements New Religious Movement <laughs>